Hi there, I'm Annie. I'm a part-time reseller on eBay and an avid thrifter and advocate for sustainable fashion. I have a soft spot for luxury and I love mixing thrifty clothes with luxury and designer items. If this sounds up your alley, please like and subscribe and join me in my thrifting adventures to see what I style or resell for profit. Hi everyone, welcome to Thrift Flex and Stuff. I'm Annie. I am so just happy today. Um, you know, I've met some really incredible YouTubers and I just want to give a shout out to all of my new subscribers. Thank you for joining. Um, and I also want to say thank you and hello to all of you who are returning viewers. I always, always appreciate your support, so thank you. But I guess I have felt like I've been reflecting a little bit. Um, one, not just about why I started YouTube, but also, um, you know, about how I got started on eBay. And I realized that when I started this channel, I never really, you know, went into my story about how I got into becoming a part-time reseller and what motivated me to really even begin this channel. So I thought I would um, use this as an opportunity to share with you a little bit of the backstory. First thrifted outfit of the day, uh, not a lot, just this top. This is a cute little Harley Davidson top that um, I believe this is from the Goodwill outlet, which you know they call the bins, and I love it because, okay, it has these little thumb holes. Aren't those the coolest little things? Oh my God, I love t-shirts that have these thumb holes. I don't know, I don't know if they like originated for sport clothing, you know, like when you go running or whatever, but for me personally, um, I like them because my hands get cold. And so when you have your little you know, thumbs in here, it just like brings the the shirt over your, you know, your knuckles. So it's like already kind of um, doing what I would do anyway, which is usually just like pull my sleeves over my hands. <laughs> So anyway, um, yeah, I like the thumb holes. I just do. And to see it in a Harley Davidson, Davidson shirt, I don't know if I see that very often. Um, but we do like, we love to thrift and resell Harley Davidson shirts whenever we come across them. But yeah, no, this one, I was not going to resell it. This was definitely all mine. So anyway, uh, that's the thrifted outfit of the day. So to get started, eBay really kind of came out of the blue for me. Um, so I was browsing eBay one day and I came across this Pyrex, this Pyrex dish. And I couldn't believe that it sold for $250. I thought, whoa, $250, I own that dish. Now, okay, so to back up, I, um, I started collecting Pyrex because my grandma used to have the turquoise Pyrex bowls. And so when I decided I wanted to have like turquoise Pyrex dishes, I then realized, oh my God, there's like all these colors and patterns in Pyrex. I had no idea, right? So I became obsessed and I would always be thrifting for Pyrex. I'd go to estate sales for Pyrex. Well, I met this firefighter and he was a reseller and he wasn't having success with Pyrex. And he's like, you like Pyrex? He's like, come to my house you can purchase for me whatever you want. So it was from this firefighter that I uh, found this really incredible dish. And I'll um, show you a picture right here because this was a book that I purchased when I was really obsessed over Pyrex. And um, I'll put a photo up here, but I'll also show you in this book. It was this pattern right here. And it is called the Orange Diamonds Pattern. So $250 this dish was going for, and it was a limited like pattern or limited availability. So that explains why um, it was like going for a lot. And it really wasn't one of my favorite like Pyrex dishes because I love all the different colors and that one just wasn't doing it for me. So I went ahead and I put my dish um, on auction right away. Actually, I didn't even put it on auction. I think what I did was, it had um, sold at 250 from an auction. So I went ahead and just posted mine buy now at 250, hoping that the people who lost that auction would like snatch that dish. And sure enough, they did. And I couldn't believe it. And so from that moment on, I was totally hooked. And I thought like, holy, ma like, holy mackerel. 
<laughs> I don't want to cuss. Holy mackerel. Like, stuff sells for $250. Dishes. I'm, I'm like eBay. So um, that's when I started looking at what else sells. What else sells? And so I started looking at toys, um, mostly like 80s toys. Started looking at mugs. Um, started looking at hardware. Started looking at like parts to kitchen appliances. And so that was really like where the focus was. And it sort of felt like gambling in a way because one, Ryan and I always would love to go to the thrift store and I just personally love to shop and it was like therapeutic for me. But now I had like a purpose and I could look for things to resell. And so it's sort of like the trial and error. You know, you pick stuff and you think, ooh, maybe this will sell. And then it doesn't and then some stuff does. So that was really the start of it. Now, I didn't even go near the clubs. I didn't even look at the clothes. That had no appeal to me. Um, I wasn't really into like shopping for clothes to resell. I would maybe look at them for myself, but I was on such an agenda when I would go to thrift stores that I wouldn't even really be interested in shopping for myself for clothes. I just wanted to look for goods to resell. So once I started getting into reselling all of the, like the mugs and the hardware goods and stuff like that, um, we started making some good like beer money is what we would call it. And then I um, realized, oh, you know, I would really love to buy this Alma purse. It was my birthday and Ryan's like, why don't you just use the eBay funds for that? It's okay, just, just go ahead and do that. And so that was how I actually purchased um, my very first Alma, which I, you know, you guys have seen me talk about this bag before, so I won't go into it, but that is how this thrift and luxe world kind of started to mesh. I found um, a purpose for my eBay uh, you know, revenue because I can now use it on purses and I didn't have to feel guilty about spending money because it would just be from my eBay profit. Now, as I bought more purses, um, I kind of reevaluated that approach because Ryan and I both um, shared, you know, in the selling. And so it seemed kind of selfish for me to take the profits and put it toward my purchases. And so, um, so now we kind of use the profits from eBay for more couple things, whether it's, you know, home, like renovation projects or vacation, things of that nature. Now, after I got the purse, um, I was starting graduate school. And it was a graduate school that I had to do this research project and I chose to research the Goodwill outlets. And it was at the Goodwill outlet that I would notice, like if you would look behind the doors where they like, they, you know, push out these huge bins, there was like stacks and stacks and stacks of clothes. Like if you think of um, barrels of hay, that's literally how they are like packaged and stacked is these, these big squares with these little wire wrappers around them and they're just stacked, 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 stacked. And it always made me think like, where are those clothes going? Because when you go to the Goodwill outlet, there's layers and layers and layers, or I guess rows rather, right? Rows and rows and rows of these blue bins filled with the clothes. And then, you know, there's hardwares and there's books, there's all of it, but for the clothes especially, I thought, where does it go? And so that was what my research project was all about. And that's what kind of led me toward becoming more interested and passionate about sustainable fashion. Now, when I learned about that, I started to feel like I need to save these clothes. <laughs> And so what I started to do was I started to understand and research what sells. And I started to then look at finding clothes specifically to resell on eBay. Now, clothes are hard and there's a lot involved and it's just not a matter of buying things that you like. You also have to think about what the market is saturated with. You have to think about what is on trend. You have to think about, are you focusing on men, women, um, sizes? Like there's so much involved. And so the long and short of it is, is I'm still learning. I really, really am. And um, I guess to become more successful with selling clothes, I started studying and watching resellers to understand how are they being so successful with it. And of course, a lot of that comes down to consistency. And there's also no consistency. 
obviously, um, with how often you list the clothing items, but it also comes down to being aware of what clothing items to seek out. How I decided to venture into eBay, or not eBay, into YouTube, kind of was started off of the clothes. Um, I was watching a lot of people share not just what they thrifted for clothes, but also how they styled them. And so as I was watching this, it occurred to me, gosh, you know what? Maybe if I shared more about the clothes that I purchase or talk about how the thrifted clothes that I get for myself and how I fashion them would bring more awareness into my eBay store. So my initial motive was to start it to bring awareness to the thrift lux and stuff ebay store but then i also really loved to just talk and talk about my luxury but also to watch other people share their luxury and so then that is when i realized i have a lot of fun sharing my Louis Vuitton items and going into why I purchased them. And I realized I have a lot of vintage items, ones that you don't see featured quite as often. And so what happened was, is it was easier to talk about my luxury items than it was to share a thrift haul because you know what happens when you share a thrift haul? You have to go list it on eBay. <laughs> and I was horrible about doing that. And so I would say it was around the end of graduate school. The pandemic was starting to kind of become a thing. This was like around, you know, um, spring 2020 time. So that's when I thought, you know what, I'm going to go ahead and just be more focused on eBay and I'm going to start a YouTube channel. And then that is how it all sort of, you know, came to fruition. But when I did that, um, I also eventually found work about a good four, six weeks after I started my YouTube channel. So then I was struggling with time. And so as a full-time worker, having a part-time reselling business and being a kind of part-time YouTuber really, how, how do you keep a schedule and how do you stay on track and be consistent? And so for me, um, there's two places for me that I had to start to really think about how to approach this strategically. So first, with the eBay store, um, there's something that I hear a lot about on YouTube, and that is you have to decide if you want to treat it as a hobby or if you want to treat it as a business. And I kind of feel like I'm in the middle there because it's fun for me. Shopping is my outlet. It makes me relax. I don't like having a lot of stuff in my house, and I do want to be shopping smart so that I can resell it. And so I made a goal for myself to go ahead and um, get our listing up to 300 items. And so when I was sort of taking this like break over the summer, you know, things became really busy for me. I started to lose my traction and I wasn't being consistent anymore. And there's also no consistency. And coming back into it, I was kind of feeling nervous again and I could kind of tell just in how I was talking. But now that I'm in it, I noticed that this last week, I was gone just like a little bit over a week and a half. And that's why I thought, oh, I need to get, I need to make sure I stay on track. And I wanted to talk to you guys about that because we have been really successful with our sales. Um, we are, I think, a little under 300 listings right now. And I'm trying to keep that at 300 or more. Um, I'm also making sure to have a goal of listing at least one to five times a day. YouTube, ironically enough, has kind of changed from being this place of a platform to bring more awareness to my eBay store to now sort of actually just being a fun outlet and activity for me to feel more connected to people. Um, 
it's been a little isolating, I think, you know, for me anyway, during this whole pandemic. And so I've really enjoyed the pen pals that I've sort of made through YouTube. And that's how I think about it, right? Is, you know, in the old days, you used to just like write a letter and like mail it and you would be so excited because you see the different stamps from different parts of the world. And now with YouTube, you can actually literally see like people's backyards and have them take you on vlogs and show you, you know, what the shops look like in London and what it looks like, you know, when you go to Japan. Like I've been loving, loving watching um, YouTubers who like to kind of take you along whether, wherever they're going. And so that's something that um, I also would like to start incorporating is to share you know, when we go to the mountains, because I take for granted that not a lot of people come to Colorado. So uh, while I don't really identify as a vlogger, I do want to share and vlog with you when we do go on adventures. Um, because I, you know, I like to think that maybe it can bring some exposure to parts of the world that others may not get to see as much. So um, if I can share that, you know, I'm happy to do that. I guess it's really just about making sure it's still fun. Um, you know, once it starts to feel like a job, I don't think I would do it anymore. And I think that applies for a lot of things. And I'm only really speaking again, like what works for me personally, I think everybody's different, but it's one of those things where if it's bringing me joy and I, you know, I feel motivated by it, then I'm gonna continue to do it. And there's one YouTuber who has this philosophy of your vibe is your tribe. And I love that saying because I really feel like I want to attract whatever sort of energy I'm putting out there. And no negativity of any kind. So I really try to make sure that when I talk to you guys that I'm well rested, that I'm in a good place. Um, but I also want to be vulnerable and share when things maybe are not completely on par. Um, but you know, only within my comfort zone, obviously, uh, because I do want to keep it real, right? Like I don't want things to get in the way of having a consistent presence. So that has certainly been, um, a personal goal for me and I've enjoyed the, um, consistent sales that we're starting to see with our eBay store. Uh, we'll see, you know, I think right now the focus is just to, cons to continue to be consistent. Um, I don't really have any monetary goals right now with it. I just want to make sure we stay at 300 listings or more continuously. And with YouTube, um, I'm not going to worry too much anymore about did I do a thrift haul or did I do a luxury video? Uh, I used to think that I should alternate them and do two videos a week. But now I'm realizing it's just gonna be whatever comes. So um, I hope you guys can be okay with that and patient with that. Um, it's hard to know, you know, who's here for the variety, who's here only for the luxury, or who's here for the thrifting. But um, I do cover all of it and I do cover random things. That's why I have the stuff in Thrift Lux and stuff because, oh man, there's some other stuff to talk about. <laughs> the real idea was to just share with you how this all came to be, why it started, um, why I'm enjoying it so much and why I'm so grateful to you guys for making it fun. Um, I just want to say thank you again for everybody who uh, watches me and who supports me and for um, my new subscribers. Welcome again. I'm so glad to have you join us and until next time, I will see you later. Bye-bye.